You're the one who wanted to change the arrangement. I, it's completely your fault. I like these chairs better. I'm good. All I'm right. good. <laughs> hey, Walton Sports Fan, how's it going? I'm AJ. I'm Anthony. And, and we're uh, here with another episode of What the Hell Happened This Week. Well, it's kind of like the first one, but we're going to start something new. We're just weekly recaps of what's going on, whether it was bodybuilding news or anything interesting we found. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice long list of a whole bunch of crap we found. Why don't you kick us off? Yep, so a lot of this we found on uh, Anabolic Minds. They kind of go through and post articles from various websites. And um, it's a pretty useful tool. So um, one of the first things is there is a research article about um, branched chain amino acids not being effective in isolation. So what that means is just getting your three um, BCAs, the isoleucine, leucine, and valine, um, a lot of companies will just give you that and say, here, you're good. And um, it does elicit some yeah, you response. Kind of, you kind of are good with it. Yeah. But, but you, it, it's like you're good, but you could be better. Yeah. Because what the BCAs do is it stimulates the muscle growth response, but it doesn't actually uh, grow the muscle. Mm -hmm. And so what you need is you need the stimulation, but at the same time, you need the other essential amino acids to actually grow that muscle. So mm -hmm. if you're seeing intra workouts or even just BCAs where they don't have the EAAs in it, don't buy it because you could be getting something 10 times better. You, mm -hmm. It's not just about the BCAs. You have to have everything else. So what you can actually do is you can take your BCAs with your normal whey protein. Um, if you have like an unflavored protein, you can throw your BCAs in with it to get more of a muscle building effect. Yeah. Or, um, what we're doing is eventually down the line when our intro workout comes out, mm -hmm. we are pairing the BCAs with the EAAs so that you get the full slate of what you need. We've been testing it. Yeah, it works so great. So awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're going to love it when we get that. Topic that I'm a big fan of, uh, UFC and MMA. So I hope all you guys got the chance to watch the McGregor Mayweather fight. And I was personally pulling for McGregor. Um, he got beat around like a bald-headed stepchild. Yeah, it was pretty. It was, it was pretty bad, um, and it's like the it whole time it was. It was good. It was a good fight. Yeah, but you just knew the whole time Mayweather was just like yeah. playing with him. But anyway, it was it was good. Um, but McGregor just called out Nate Diaz, and if you're not aware of the whole McGregor versus Nate Diaz story, they fought at the one. They had two fights in the one seventies weight class, and then Nate Diaz beat McGregor first, and then McGregor came back and beat Nate Diaz. Well, now McGregor is calling out Nate Diaz again, but not at the 170, but to fight down at 155, which is where he's at now. So that should be a really good fight, I think. Um, they'll be faster. I think the fighting will be a lot. There'll be a lot more striking in it. Um, I'd personally like to see a knockout or <laughs> a broken arm or something. Mm -hmm. mm. Coffee's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a coffee guy. No. Not my day. Not my day. <laughs> I think, see, a lot of people say that the world is run by money. The world is definitely run by coffee. Like, screw <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there I wouldn't be money without coffee. <laughs> yeah, I know it's good for you, but I, I'm not, I don't like drinking hot liquid. Like, like the way that I drink it isn't good for you. Like, when you drink half a pot of coffee a day, it's not good for you <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it's I, like, I think they say, like, three is what you want to hit. It's like, two or three is the recommended amount. It's a lot of diuretic. There is um, a lawsuit coming out involving SARMs, which... SARMs, well, if, so athletic extreme, which is also called nutrition distribution, <laughs> they're um, suing Wicked Nutrition Labs and Dynamic Technical Formulas, also called DTF, which is kind of funny, but a side <laughs> point. Um, so Don't because, do that. Yeah, so th those two companies were marketing products that contain SARMs. And the issue is that, that, was that um, SARMs aren't legal, like technically. I mean... They're more, not, more or less. It's, so it's kind they're of a gray area. The, the, okay, so the FDA doesn't recognize them as legal dietary ingredients, which is the big issue. Dietary ingredients. Yeah, so that's the main. That's the key word. That's yeah. the buzzword. So because of that, it's not really legal to put them in a like supplement market and sell it. Like you can't just kind of. I mean. You can. It's not like pro hormones where they've been like completely banned illegal off the market. Um, I think it's the way that it's branded and marketed because what, the, what yeah. this company was doing something actually incredibly shady. Um, so yeah, Wicked was like putting a SARM in there and also putting a bunch of natural ingredients in it and right. trying to like hide it's it. It's like they're masking it and saying, look at all these great benefits, but they're not really saying it's a SARM. Yeah, so that like, was the problem. I yeah. think that was the biggest issue. Yeah, there were ones that like solid SARM, like 
there are places that have like licenses to like produce and sell mm -hmm. and they tell you it's a SARM and as far as I'm aware, like that's fine to do, yeah. but you have to sell it as a SAR, not as a like natural or dietary supplement. Yeah, that's there's there's fine lines between it. Because so. there's, there's certain warnings that have to go with it. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's almost like, um, oh my goodness, there's a term. You know what I'm talking? No, you don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it's, <laughs> while you think of that, so basically <laughs> these two companies didn't follow the rules the right way, so they're getting sued for unfair competition. So basically what it is, is so Athletic Extreme has this muscle building product that doesn't have SARMs in it and they say it's natural. And then these other two are marketing muscle building products that have SARMs in it. So clearly there's an issue where the ones with SARMs are gonna be more effective, but in, in this market, it's not technically allowed. So what, what, what is it called? After a thorough Google search <laughs> and it's, it's False representations. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, like the argument is, why would um, someone go from SARMs to not SARMs unless either they get hurt or SARMs aren't available? So, um, the the one company DTF they ended up pulling their product. Yeah, it's hilarious. I, what does it stand for? <laughs> it's a dynamic technical formulations. <laughs> they yeah, they're down to uh, BF apparently in the situation. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so they pulled their products back off back it's in so May, funny. I think, and then Wicked is probably completely screwed because they they did it a lot more shady and all their stuff was still up on the web when this lawsuit came up and um, they touted all the benefits of SARMs and they didn't recognize any issues with SARMs. Um, like I said, they had it hidden in their formula and their marketing ad is just like a muscle building a dietary right. supplement, not as a SARM itself. No, but can I ask the question? How can you be so stupid? Yeah, like that like, seems pretty obvious to me. Like, why are you trying to hide it? Because you're gonna have the mar There's a market for SARMs, mm -hmm. and then there's a market for natural ingredients. Why don't you just? You People, can still yeah. combine the two, but you still have to sell it as a SARM. Why mm -hmm. don't you sell it as a SARM with this addition, not this stuff, like this natural stuff with, you know, just some other cool stuff on the side. It's shady. It's wrong. And I mean, that's. Yeah, and that's, that's why the lawsuit is coming up, because it's, it's unfair to people who are in the, it, actually mm -hmm. doing natural stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I found this kind of, it's, I mean, I think it's kind of common sense, but it's one of those things that you don't really think about when you read it. And you, when you read it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, like, I've been doing that, but I didn't understand what I was doing. Um, there's this article on Anabolic Minds called the six, I call them toughest drop sets. They were pretty hard. I tried a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty tough. It, it burns. It, I got a really good chest bump from it. But they compare drop sets to mechanical drop sets. And your standard drop set is when you're like running the rack on arm. Mm -hmm. So you start heavy, you go all the way down. Or you're doing um, like your heavy drop sets like I do and you're doing a heavy set of five, you cut the weight in half, then you go to failure, then you cut the weight in half again, you go to failure. The idea is that all you're doing is <coughs> reducing the weight. You're not necessarily changing the movement. Whereas a mechanical drop set is you're not changing the weight, but you're doing a different mechanic. So it was actually kind of cool. The, okay. one, the one drop set is you're doing dumbbell flies. And then, so you do 8 to 10, and then you come in and you do um, dumbbell chest okay. press. And so, and you do 8 to 10. And that's, it's kind of like a superset. Yeah. But it's a mechanical drop set. Yeah, I guess. I compare that more to a superset. Yeah, it's, you know, I guess it's like in between a superset and drop set, yeah. Yeah, well, you're not reducing the weight. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't actually consider it a drop set. Yeah, I, I guess. It's a super set. Uh -huh. One of the oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, so one of the popular ones is um like for triceps, people will lay lay down and do the skull crushers and then right after do the close grip press yeah. with the same weight. That's basically That's what this is saying. Yeah. Um because like, like yeah, it's kind of it, I mean it's a super set. But a super set is when you do different exercises back to back. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people will do different body parts. I guess is why it's called. Well, well you do that, don't you? Yeah. You do your shoulder thing with the thing. It was in our last video. Yeah, yeah. You see it. Go watch the video, by the way. We'll mm -hmm. put the link in the description. Um, so that's all it is. So give it a shot if you haven't really. I guess just keep doing supersets. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's all this really is. Last topic is about green tea. So a lot of people already know green tea is good for you. Um, lots of great health benefits already. And um, one of the big reasons for that is this compound called EGCG which is one of the main active things in green tea. It's, it's a catechin. So, um, 
Yeah, it's like, it's like ET. So when you're when you're phoning home, you're getting all these benefits. Yeah. Um, so yeah, EGCG is the main catechin present in green tea, and that's where a lot of the really positive effects of green tea come from. So you know, like the kind of like improved insulin response, blood sugar regulation, um, mm -hmm. energy, a lot of that comes from that. Well, energy from the caffeine. You're finding it has mental benefits mm -hmm. too. So um, in one of the studies they did, they found that it helps counter the negative effects of a high fat, high fructose diet, which is qualified as the Western diet since we have a lot of... AKA why America's obese. Yeah, so like all the high fructose corn syrup and saturated fat, so like your Oreos, all, all your tasty stuff, but um, mm -hmm. all your fast food, yeah. So um, basically what they did the study, um, tested rats, which a lot of people are like, oh, a rat study doesn't mean anything, but I mean, it still does. It's pretty easy to... Let's, let's, let's be honest for a second. The majority of studies that have been done that have been, that humans, or I guess have been deemed okay for humans is because of rat studies. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it, it's green tea, like we already know it's saved as benefits. <sighs> this, this study kind of just provides more evidence and confirms what we already mm -hmm. know. So basically what they did was they fed, um, they had the control group, they had the high fat, high fructose group, and then they had the high fat, high fructose where they gave the EGCG to mm -hmm. them. So basically what they found was the one with the, on that on that special diet, quote unquote special, um, with the, the catechin in it, um, they had a significantly different weight than the one that didn't have the uh, green tea thing. So basically, basically the, the weight gain was highly stunted by having the, that green so tea compound. what they're saying is you don't have to stop eating McDonald's. You can just add in some green tea, and you're just not going to gain as much weight. But, <laughs> I mean, more or less, that's kind of what it's saying. So, and, and, like, as bad as it's... Well, you can go on a real diet and have green tea and lose more weight. Yeah, so, it, it, the, what they're finding is it helps improve, like, the insulin response to a lot of things. So, like, your blood sugar levels, your insulin response will determine how your body deals with that crappy fat and crappy sugar and all that. See, I like that idea. I can dirty bulk and <laughs> it, not gain fat. <laughs> in, in, theory, in theory, it would help you kind of reduce the effects of a dirty bulk, but I guess I still wouldn't fully recommend it. Times but, are turning. <laughs> but yeah, so basically what the study did was confirm more of what we already know is that green tea is really freaking good for you mm -hmm. and um, it has lots of benefits. And then it also found, excuse me, that the mice got some mental benefits too. So the ones that had the green tea compound got through the maze faster than the ones without it that were on like the crappy diet. So mental alertness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So or some kind of remembrance. Mm -hmm. It helped with like the cognition. Cognition. Yeah. <laughs> we should know that one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, green tea is good for you. Duh. Keep drinking. <laughs> so you all know Brad Castleberry. Oh God. <laughs> you all know Brad Castleberry. Mark Wobliner called him out. And I found a video yesterday, I'll link it in the description, as long as the links to the rest of these stuff so you guys can read the articles mm -hmm. for yourselves. Apparently now he's using fake dumbbells. Um, and the interesting about these dumbbells is it actually has his gym's logo. Ooh, excuse me. It actually has his gym's logo on the dumbbell, just like screen printed right on. So now they're trying to say like, ooh, it's the gym's dumbbells. <coughs> well, if you look closely, it's not even the same style of dumbbell. I was watching the video, and I think the gym he's at uses round dumbbells, and he's got the different like, hexagonal, funny. the sided dumbbells. Um, <clears throat> he's got videos of him doing like front raises and everything with 120s. I don't think one. I don't think that's possible. Yeah, like I'm sure it's possible. Like nothing's impossible. But you're. If, if that's what you're doing, you're not going to get a good muscle response. Because you're, you're probably swinging it way up, maybe yeah. getting one, probably yeah. hurting yourself. The only time I've actually seen somebody get 120 up to that point and over their head is when they do the uh, the dumbbell uh, strongman. Oh, process. yeah, yeah. But there's like a technique to that. Mm. You're not, it's not necessarily meant to um, trigger muscle growth. You're training more of a strength nervous system response. Mm. And there's there's a technique like you're actually jumping and getting under the dumbbell and pushing it up. It's not a bodybuilding movement. No, yeah. um, and there's another video of him curling 315 on the straight bar. That's called a torn bicep. If you didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> he's not, and the bar is not even bending. Um, so again, Brad Castleberry didn't learn anything. The the video is actually really entertaining to watch. Um, the guy actually shares some messages he had back and forth with Brad's trainer. 
where they were actually calling him out like, hey, come down, fly with us, come to the gym, work out with us, and you'll see. And the guy's like, okay, cool, I'm going to book my ticket now. When, what, what do you want to do it for? And they never got back to him. So take it for what you, what you think it is. I think it's full shit. Where he puts the dumb and dumbbell. <laughs> dumb and dumbbell. And you probably saw me laugh to myself about a minute ago. That's what I thought <laughs> I hope Brent sees this video. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Be sure to. Where's I don't know which other like so, is that. It's like gonna, it's gonna be over is here it somewhere. Here? Yeah. So this way. I think the likes over here is the subscribe here. Maybe? I think I don't know. It's are so, they in the same area? We're still new to this crap. Maybe I, is it is it up here? No. Or here. Don't don't go up there. Don't, I think don't I can. Way. I think I can put it here. Maybe yeah. I I know the likes down here. Yeah. I think that the scrap subscribes on this side. Okay, well, wherever they're at, like and subscribe, or like yeah. and subscribe. Hit them, please. Whatever you gotta yeah. do. <laughs> Share the video with your friends. Thank you for the support, guys.